materials I've chosen. So this is a size 10 Gamma Katsu SL12S, the hook of choice for um, for uh, the tropics. It's so strong. Uh, never had one bend or break yet, so that's a good thing. The body material is H2O fish scale. I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's basically um, you know got crystal flash mixed in with um, a whole lot of uh, the best description is the um, DNA fish fiber that they used to um, bring out um, that's basically what that is and of course some dumbbell eyes so I'm going to go with some pink double um, pupil eyes um, which are fairly new out uh, but have a really nice finish on them so we'll go with those uh, and I'm just going to use a flat wax nylon thread um, whatever you, you're comfortable with uh, thread wise just, just go with uh, flat wax is, is usually pretty good for um, keeping eyes on and um, also for things like um, finishing off heads nice and smoothly so all I'm going to do is lay down a quick bed of thread And then cut that off there. Now, depend how, depends how picky you are here. If you want a fly that the eyes are never going to move on, then a little bit of super glue at this point in time is not a bad thing to put on. Uh, you don't need a hell of a lot, just a drop, um, roughly where your eyes are going to go. For me, I don't usually do that step. Let's face it, up at Weeper, your flies probably aren't going to last long enough for you to worry about whether the uh, heads are, have moved or not, the eyes have moved. So a few wraps, bring the eye back around, a few more wraps on the other side, and I then go over, under, and really with the flat wax, and this is the good thing about using flat wax or even gel spun um, thread, uh, you can really put some some um, pressure and pull that thread really tight onto the eyes. Just check it then to make sure it's straight, which it is. All right. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just put a little drop of super glue onto the thread. So this is this is the technique to use if you you really want to lock those eyes in. So. Um, like I said, for weeper flies, I don't usually do it. I'm just doing this to show you one way of getting those eyes on really tight. All right, and then just a little base here. Um, I'm only tying the clouds on one side of the hook. All right, so that's why I'm doing this, just to make sure it's fully covered. i turn that over. All right, so then when you take the um, fish fibre, and take a bit off there. Um, you don't really need a hell of a lot of material in them. Some people really overdo the material on um, on flies, especially clouses. Um, you know they don't need to be super big and bulky. Um, it's always good to actually have a bit of a range um, of of you know materials and also how much material. Um, you think about sometimes like when you're fishing for salmon down here um, sometimes they're on really skinny little almost see-through bait fish so you know big bulky clouds are they're probably not going to eat right so I'm going to tie in two lots of this all right so all I'm going to do is just put the first layer down and I've pre-tapered it as you could probably tell and we put that a little bit of thread there the good thing about the synthetic materials is um, they don't flare out like bucktail either so you can tie them on fairly tight. So that's the first part. Cut that at a bit of an angle, bring that down. The, the hard part about the synthetics is as you'll see there, you get a really skinny um, finish at the, the eye of the hook unless you tie in a couple of bunches so that's one of the reasons I do it in two bunches so you get the material on top of each other. Just tapering this next piece. It's easier to taper before you tie it in than it is to 
try and cut a taper in once it's tied in so just keep that in mind some people just put it on straight and then try to taper it at the end but you end up sometimes making the fly too short right so there's the the tail that's about the length we want which is probably what about one and a half lengths of the hook shank just to give you some idea and then cut that last bit off at an angle like so and you should get a reasonably neat head then down to the eye of the hook and then just finish off the head it fairly neat and consistent it's pretty good there and then whip finish however you normally whip finish if I just did five there now if you're not going to use any finish on the head then you'll do more than five um, but I always put a little bit of clear goo hydro or whatever epoxy you've got the clear goo hydro is good because it's fairly thin it actually soaks into the thread and a little bit just back into the material which soaks into the material and just holds it all in place hit that with the torch You'll see those eyes absolutely glow when it hits the, um, the UV torch. So it's one of the reasons I like the fluoro colours. So that'll be a good fly for up the river or somewhere. So there you go. That's it. Clouser. Done. Uh, okay, so the reason I tie it only one side is you don't get the um, materials fouling the hook. Obviously it's a lot quicker to tie that way as well. So because uh, you've only got one tail it's not going to come back around and foul the hook from the one at the bottom so you're not standing there forever uh, trying to sort your material out at the back that's it for the clouser thanks